it's been a while since I last posted a video, and I want to apologize for that real quick. Um, I'm just decided I'm not going to jinx myself and say that I'm going to have a lot of time during the month to film and read books, because every time I do that, all these things get slammed at me, and then I end up not having time, and that's kind of what happened. So the first book I read, which is technically a novella, but that was Fracture Me by Tahara Mafi, and I gave that a 3 out of 5 stars, I believe. Going into this, I didn't have the highest of expectations, because I heard a lot of stuff about it, and I felt like I was in like my own lonely boat of Adam shippers, and I loved Adam. I loved him as a character and as a person in the Shatter Me series, and just why? I felt like with this novella, you didn't get much complete new insight like we did with Warner's novella. I feel like with Warner's, you did get his backstory, and you got to understand him more as a character, and you got like a whole different side of him kind of and you you understood his actions with Adam you did get to see another side of him and you kind of realized huh maybe he wasn't as we were all hyped up to be it kind of felt like there wasn't a lot more additional storyline to it it it's good to read if you hadn't read um unravel me for a while which i haven't so it was kind of nice to get a refresher but it didn't like add anything new too much to the story that i didn't already know Whereas with the other, you got a lot of information and it was definitely like an amazing novella. So jumping off of that, I ended up reading Ignite Me, also by Tahara Mafi. And I, oh my gosh, the words cannot even escape my mouth. I loved this book so much. So it should not be surprised that I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. It definitely took a different turn than I was thinking it was going to take. I will say that this book definitely changed opinions for me that I didn't think were going to change. I ended up loving a character that I wasn't necessarily fond of starting out with, and then I ended up hating a character that I was really fond of in the other books. My favorite part of this entire book, though, was Juliet. I feel like her growth as a character with each book, she was kind of different with how each book was brought out. I hope that makes sense. Like in the first one, you know, she's really scared because of everything she's been through. The second book, she's kind of unsure of herself. But this one, holy crap, this is the Juliet I was waiting for. She kicked butt. She was just like, you know what? I'm brushing this off and nothing's getting to me. And she like actually took control of her own life and I loved it. And I just, I cannot rave enough about this book. I ended up loving it. I could not be happier with this series and I'm so sad that it's over. So the next book I picked up was part of a bind up which is the used to be by Aline Cook bind up and it has two books in it and I've only read one of the books so far and that was The Education of Haley Kendrick and I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. It was alright. It wasn't like my favorite book in the world, but it was definitely a cute story. Basically it's about this girl who goes to a boarding school after the death of her mother and her father is still trying to cope and he thinks that this is the best way um, kind of to take care of her as he sends her off to this boarding school. At the same time, all up until the story starts, she's been like trying to be the perfect daughter, never getting into trouble, getting the perfect grades and trying to lead the perfect life. And this leads to her kind of realizing that she's sick of pretending to be this perfect girl when really it's not getting noticed by her dad, which is who she's been trying to impress. So she kind of takes a different turn with her life and starts being more adventurous. And this little adventure streak ends up getting her into some serious trouble at school. She meets a new guy who kind of helps her out with this new adventure streak, which is probably like my favorite part of this book was her interaction with this new guy that she met and he kind of like opens her eyes and shows her that there's more out there that she just puts herself in new situations so it's kind of like a discovering yourself type of book but I I ended up enjoying it it wasn't my favorite there it was lacking something I just can't put my finger on it yet but and then it was around this time that I picked up Crest by Marissa Meyer and this is when I left the book home and it kind of got neglected after that not because it wasn't a good book, because this started off really well, and I do plan on finishing it, like, really soon. So, I'm on page, like, 93 right now. So, I do plan on finishing it this month. I feel bad that it got put down, but I left it home. So, still in the process of reading this book. So, while I was home, I decided I would get to some new adult recommendations that have been sitting in my Goodreads account for the longest time. And I've been getting different requests 
to do um, like my favorite new adult books type of video because I know that's a new popular genre that's been coming out and truthfully up until this month I felt like I really hadn't read like a whole lot of new adult so I decided I wanted to you know see what everyone's been enjoying and I have been recommended this book so much lately and it is Wallbanger by Alice Clayton. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I ended up really enjoying this. I think that this is definitely a very humorous book. Um, that's what a lot of people mentioned to me before reading it and all the reviews that I've seen out there were talking about how funny it was. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like the most hilarious thing I've read, but I did definitely enjoy the humor aspect of it. I thought it was very funny, especially because you got to see more inside like the girl's head and she just said like very quirky things and it was just really funny. It's about this girl who moves into a new apartment and she quickly learns that her next door neighbor has a very sexual lifestyle going on. And like the title being Wallbanger, she basically hears the noises coming from her bedroom wall, from, you know, wall banger. So when she finally has had enough of this, she storms over to his apartment to confront him and it leads to this like unexpected friendship sort of thing happening between the two of them. So through this book you're kind of traveling with them through this friendship of theirs and trying to get them to navigate to something more than a friendship. So if you're into new adult books I would definitely recommend this one. I think it's very funny and it's very cute. So then I ended up picking up Ignite and Burn by R.J. Lewis and this is I guess you could say like a duology type of a book. This is like one of those series where you get books from different characters' perspectives. These first two books take place for two characters and then the whatever else she comes out with are going to be from a different character's point of view. I gave uh, these two books 5 out of 5 stars. I ended up really loving this series and I did not think that I was going to enjoy it as much as I did, but I ended up really loving it. So it follows the storyline of the main character, Sarah. And she meets this boy when she's, I believe she's 8 years old and he is 10 years old. She kind of has a very rough life um, growing up. Her parents were severe um, drug and alcohol abusers and they really didn't pay much attention to her. Um, she was abused as a child, um, she was neglected and that kind of resulted in, you know, she didn't always have like nice clothes, she wore like the same outfit. Um, her dad would like buzz her hair so that she wouldn't get lice. Like, it's definitely heartbreaking to read about this. So this, uh, so this little boy Jace sees that she's getting picked on by this bully and it's a daily thing for her and he ends up standing up for her and no one else has ever stood up for this girl so she kind of, like, sticks with him and they kind of become, like, inseparable after this and it is so cute to watch. I absolutely love, love, love these two characters. So for a good portion of the first book, you're kind of watching their, uh, relationship evolve as them being friends and you kind of watch them navigate from friendship to something more. And after they graduate high school and they move away to go to college together, um, Sarah's past is kind of creeping up with her. I mean, when you're growing up in a house that she had grown up in, it's going to play with your head. And she gets very bad um, anger issues. And when she kind of realizes how bad it's getting and she realizes what she's putting Jace through, she doesn't want to put him through anymore, so she decides to get out of the relationship to kind of save herself and him, and leaves. I promise you guys this is not a spoiler, do not shoot me, this is all in the back of the book. I promise you guys that. I would not spoil a storyline for you. Like this whole first part of the book, like you know that it's leading up to this and they're kind of like taking you back through like memories and whatnot, so I promise I'm not spoiling this, I promise. But basically the big storyline takes place five years after she had left him, and she comes back into town because uh, her mother was killed in a car accident so she's coming back to help like clear out her uh, mom's old house and she ends up running into Jace and basically she hasn't seen him or spoken to him since she kind of left him high and dry and obviously he's a little bitter about it so basically the rest of this book is you're watching them progress through this situation and you're watching them basically kind of rebuild hopefully a relationship and she's trying to help him get out of the situation that she was in and it's all I'm going to say and there's so many more twists and turns in this book that I haven't, I'm not going to spoil for you guys so if that sounds interesting to you, you're in the new adult, I would definitely recommend this series. I'm also halfway through Just One Day by Gail Foreman. I think I'm almost exactly halfway through it. Um, I just got to kind of a dull spot and ended up putting it down, don't hate me. I do plan on finishing this this month as well, so I will be updating you guys on how that goes. 
Um, I was hoping to read it before the discussion for the Chicklets Book Club, but my luck, I always end up working on the days that they um, do their discussion. But I do plan on finishing that and Cress, as well as several of the other books that I did not finish from last month's TBR, and I won't mention all of them, but the one I will mention that I know without a shadow of a doubt because this is probably like my most um, requested book to read from that, and that was Obsidian by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So I'm picking this one up like it's like my next book to pick up, so it will get read this month, I promise you guys that. I felt horrible for not being able to get to it this last month, but it will get read this month because I am not waiting any longer to read this. And since I still have quite a bit of books from last month's TBR list, I'm not going to add on like so many more. Um, the only ones I'm going to add on is Miss Peregrine's, or Peregrine's, I can't say that, Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. This is uh, March's pick for the Chicklets Book Club. I know this is not a Chicklet book, but we're kind of taking like a break from Chicklet type books. And this was the book that was voted for, so I cannot wait. I've been wanting to read this for a while. I love creepy books, and I love creepy books with pictures, and this seems like it's got both. So I'm really excited to finally dive into this book. And then I decided to pick out a book from my A to Z book challenge for this year. So I picked out Pivot Point by Casey West. I've been meaning to get to this for a long time now, so I selected this one to start off this challenge with, and... If you're not familiar with it, I did a video on this where basically for each letter of the alphabet I have to read a book this year that starts with that letter. Specifically on this list and I picked books that have been sitting on my to be read shelf for the longest time out of all the others and so I selected this one because I loved um, The Distance Between Us by Casey West. I know that's a contemporary and I don't believe this is contemporary but everyone says that this one is even better so I know the sequel came out not that long ago, so I really need to just jump on this and hurry and get it read. So I do plan on reading this one as well. And then the only other book I will probably add to this is the one I select from my TBR jar because I just think it's fun to draw and not know what I'm going to be reading. So let's see what I get. I drew out, not that you guys can see, but I drew The Storyteller by Antonia Mike. Gallus or Michaelis. I hope I didn't slaughter that. So this is the book I picked from my TBR jar. I'm really excited to read this. I think this cover is so gorgeous. All right, so that was my February wrap up and my March to be read list. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'm sorry this was on the longer side of my videos so I apologize but I felt like there was a lot to get through on this video. So with that I will just let you guys go and I will see you in my next video. Bye!